Today, Joe Biden tells Israel to de-escalate with Hamas. Also, Texas bans mask mandates for local government and public schools. We have got a lot coming up today, and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Today joined by uh, my good friend, he needs no introduction, America's favorite cowboy and future governor of Texas, Chad Prather. I love your optimism. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, it's one of the few things that I remain optimistic about in life. So <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I have lived through 2020, you forget. Uh, also joined by Matthew Marsden, actor and producer. He is, it's his maiden voyage on the show. You are a new transplant. I am a new transplant, so thank you very much for having me here. From the place we shall not name, mm -hmm. the place that shall not be named. Yeah, we won't talk about that. That uh, you definitely remember why you moved here to Texas. Oh yeah, every day. Yes, <laughs> and you will remember that when you go to the polls. Oh yes. As we, as we, I just like to remind everyone who comes from California, oops, who comes from California, <laughs> don't forget why you came here. That's all I'm saying. I think we're safe with Matt. I think yeah. we are safe I with Matt. I think you're okay. I think that's why I invited Matt on the show. <laughs> all right. Uh, so let's get to the headlines of the day. So Joe Biden uh, reportedly told Benjamin Netanyahu that he wants a significant de-escalation de today in the battle between Israel and Hamas. Hamas, I cannot speak today, in the Gaza Strip. Uh, now, this is interesting because, um, you know, <laughs> We saw, we've had, we had videos of it that we showed on the show. We saw the Iron Dome responding, and I say responding uh, very, like, I mean responding, uh, responding to all of the rockets that, yeah, there's the picture for those of you who are watching on, uh, on video. Uh, we saw all of the rockets being launched towards Israel, Israel defending themselves with the Iron Dome. And, uh, you know, we said, okay, how is the Biden administration going to handle this? Because, you know, previously, obviously the United States has considered Israel an ally. That is no surprise. But we have this creeping uh, anti-Semitism coming into the Democratic Party. We have the squad who's constantly talking about Israel and constantly talking about the Palestinians and their right to exist and how dare Israel do this. And so, it was interesting to see how the Biden administration was going to play it. Um, they seemed to be a little bit neutral at first, and now they are uh, telling Israel that they need to de-escalate de with Hamas. But I guess my question that I'll start the ball rolling is, how do you de-escalate with someone who is, in fact, just trying to wipe you off the face of the planet? I'm, yeah. I'm confused. You, you've, seen, you've seen the meme where it says if Israel, um, if you know, if if Gaza, if the Palestinians were to quit shooting, then Israel would quit shooting. And the opposite is true as well. If Israel were to stop shooting, Gaza would not stop. Right. They're gonna continue going. Right. Uh, the bigger thing in, in that regards to me with Joe Biden is he thinks everybody, he could talk to everybody like they're corn pop, right? You know, <laughs> hey Jack, you know, the, the, it's like he's bossing yeah. everybody around. Yeah. And I don't see where he has any political collateral with Bibi Netanyahu at this point in time because he hasn't behaved like an ally. No. He hasn't supported. It took him forever uh, just to make the phone call. Exactly, so, uh, and I, I appreciate what Netanyahu said. He said, no, nah, we're just gonna stay the course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joe just wants to boss everybody around, mm -hmm. and, and that just that ain't gonna work. Yeah. If that if that's your if that's your foreign policy, then it's it's a bad one. <laughs> Matt. Well, I just think that you know you have a situation where this isn't a theoretical, right? It's not a, a hypothetical situation. Mm -hmm. It's like someone's life is on the line. Mm -hmm. So they're just not going to say, oh yeah, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll listen to you, we'll de-escalate, when they know what's going to happen. Right. They're going to get wiped off the face of the planet, right? right? Mm -hmm. So of course, Bibi Netanyahu is going to say, uh, no, actually, and how can I do that? Because if I stop, they're still going to keep bombing me, right. right? And that means that people are going to die. So, you know, this is the real world. It's not, it's not a, uh, just a political sphere where you can spout off whatever you want mm -hmm. and there's not real consequences, mm -hmm. right? So, so that's the issue I think we're dealing with. And I always look and see, it's kind of like, you know when you have a bad parent, right? You have a bad parent that says when, when people are squabbling, or their kids are squabbling, not saying that they're kids, but you know, the analogy yeah. is when their kids are squabbling, that they'll insist on the kid that is willing to bend, right? The one that is, that is reasonable, right? That will look at the situation and say, well, you know, for the, not for the greater good, but you know, for the benefit of others, I'll, I'll kind of step back a little yeah. bit, right? And that's bad parenting, right? Because you have to look and say, 
who is in the right and, and what are the consequences for each other's behavior, right? If someone punches someone in the nose, you want them to punch back so they'll stop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think that, that you know, we, we really, if we look at it as a, as a parental thing, you know, it's ridiculous. You, you cannot expect Israel to not respond. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so whenever, so you, you bring up looking at it as a, as a parental, and I love that analogy, by the way, but I guess my question is, at this point, how involved should the United States be with these types of issues around the world? Yeah, we're, you know, Hamas is, I mean, it's a terrorist organization. I, it, I mean, it, so we, we, we've got to show a strong backbone yeah. in this situation, because you're right, there, there is, there's only one way to put a stop to this. Uh, you meet with violence, with vi with greater violence. Mm -hmm. You know, you you bring the gun to the knife fight, uh, and and you enable that. The quicker the quicker that we support our allies and can put a stop to this thing. And, and I'm not saying that America has to get involved mm -hmm. uh, militarily or anything like that. Israel can handle its own. I mean, they've proven that throughout history. They can handle themselves. Uh, but you got to say, look, finish this. You know, yeah. finish this thing. Yeah. But if you don't do that by turning around and walking away from it. Yeah, what do you think, Matt? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that, uh, like you say, you don't necessarily have to, you know, we're not talking about boots on the ground, right? right. We're just right. talking about a, a moral stance that says, hey, look, this is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And I think that any killing, I mean, we all say that, and we all agree that any loss of life is tragic, right? But I, you start, they started it, right? Yeah. It didn't come from nowhere. And, and again, like you said, I was thinking about that in, in, I think it was something that Dennis Prager did in one of his videos that said, if one side laid down their arms, there'd be peace. And if the other side laid down their arms, there'd be a massacre. Right. Right. And I think that that's absolutely true. And, and, and that's, again, we've got to have big people in the room. We have to have yeah. adults in the room that understand the reality of the situation on the ground. It's not a hypothetical. This right. is you real. This is people dying. That. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Um, you, I mean, you look at the Democrat Party, though, and there are a lot of people and it, within leadership positions, but also just generally speaking, who are, just have it so backwards. Um, and they think that Israel is, or is the aggressor. And, you know, I'm reading, uh, I just happened to go to CNN, uh, d specifically <laughs> because I wanted to see what was on their front page and I wanted to see the slant that it was written in. And sure enough, it's like, you know, these uh, pictures of these children's faces who happened to get hit in uh, an Israeli, you know, rocket strike against uh, against Gaza. And it, so it's showing all of these children's faces and Israel is so mean and it just makes you wonder how much of it is just complete misinformation that could be easily cleared up if we had an honest mainstream media. Yeah, and, and not only that, I mean, it's kind of hard to, to fathom the uh, the level of anti-Semitism that is getting spouted by the blue check marks yeah. and the various folks uh, in in the media, as well as our government, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty it's pretty astounding to to see that. Yeah. Um, it, there's a lot of hatred for Israel. Yeah. It, but again, again, it's like, how did that how did that happen? How did we let that happen? Is it just? I mean, mainstream media obviously is that yeah. the only thing? Why? What? What is it? I think education, yeah. schools, mm -hmm. is is a problem. You know, we don't have a. a we don't have a free and fair press right. anymore. We don't, it's clear. And I think that there are so many people in positions of power in education that they're teaching one side or, you know, whether it's a right or wrong side, they're teaching one side of the argument and not allowing people to make up their minds. I think it's, I think it's super important if we really do uh, trust in the facts, you know, mm -hmm. you give the facts out to people and then you allow them to make a determination mm -hmm one way or the other, which way, you know, which way they feel. Like you say, I mean, if it bleeds, it leads, right? So right. Gonna, you put a picture of a kid on the front of, an, of, a, of a site and everyone's like, rightly so, they're like, make it stop, yeah. mm -hmm. right? But again, they don't see what was going on before and just because Israel has been incredibly efficient at defending itself, if we didn't have the Iron Dome, mm -hmm. there'd be tons of Jewish kids exactly. dead mm -hmm. on the streets, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is what it is as far mm -hmm. as that is concerned. I think we, you know, we really need to educate people correctly on the facts on the ground. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, notice that the Iron Dome was not activated until the 
rockets started launching in their direction. Amazing technology. I, I know. Mean, it really is incredible to watch. Those of you, again, who, if you're listening on audio podcasts, you're missing it. We're showing the, uh, the footage of all of these uh, missiles being intercepted. It really is incredible. Uh, all right, I want to get to our next story. So President Joe Biden, uh, speaking of which, what faced intense backlash what, what is today? Wednesday? Yesterday. Okay. Faced backlash uh, yesterday over a report that said that his administration was going to waive sanctions on a company and its CEO who are responsible for building Russia's Nord Stream 2 pipeline to Germany. Uh, the State Department will also acknowledge that the corporate entity in charge of the project, which is Nord Stream, and its CEO, who is just so happens to be a Putin crony, uh, are engaged in sanctionable activities, but the State Department is going to waive the applications of those sanctions, citing U.S. national interests. So uh, they're instead going to sanction some Russian ships. Um, and it's just interesting because now he is, Joe Biden is uh, being talked about, like, hey, maybe he's going to end up being the most pro-Russia president ever. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering when the impeachment process starts <laughs> for that. My favorite quote of Barack Obama's is, never underestimate Joe's ability to F something up. <laughs> okay? He said it. Uh, that is a poignant quote very from Barack poignant. Obama. And uh, Joe has that ability. Uh, the guy, I keep calling him a pudding head because his brain's smooth. There's no, there's no lumps on it at all. I mean, it's just not a lot going on right there. He's weak. Yeah. He's weak. Uh, and, and what he's willing to do for Russia, he's not willing to do for America, right? You're going to shut down a Keystone pipeline uh, and put all these people out of work. We see incredible gas prices going through the roof. We had hackers that shut down this, the, the large pipeline uh, mm -hmm. last week. Uh, we paid yeah, all, cyber, all of a sudden, cyber terrorists. We're suddenly paying them $5 million. All of a sudden, the private sector is not to be messed with by the government, right? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he's going to offer this to, to Russia. And everything he does is from a stance of weakness, right? Everything is from a stance of weakness because he's not leading. And we heard for four years under Donald Trump, Russia, 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 Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was nothing there. There was, there was, there was nothing there. Twenty-five, thirty million dollars spent to investigate this thing, and there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. And now we're this is right here in front of your face. Mm -hmm. This pandering to Russia, and what's going to be done about it? Absolutely nothing. The, the hypocrisy once again astounds me. It's so true, man. That all I was thinking was that when you were saying that is just hypocrisy, yeah. and mm -hmm. I think that drives fair-minded people crazy, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's oh, you know, we've got to look after the environment, yet the best way of trans transporting gasoline is through a pipeline, right? <laughs> Otherwise, we're still going to transport the gasoline, yeah. but it's going to be in trucks, diesel yeah. trucks that are going to drive all the way. So, so we have that issue. It's the same thing with a mask thing, right? So mask, mask, mask. You know, we've got to care for people, but then you see in these pictures with birds with the masks around them, they're non-biodegradable. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that for me, it's, it's this hypocrisy. Again, Russia, 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 Russia. That's mm -hmm. all we heard for four years, right? And nothing. Now, there's nothing about this, and yet we're seeing something that's patently going to damage the United States, right? I mean, it is. I mean, it, it, whichever way you look at it, whether it's economically or, mm -hmm. or uh, even on an optics you know, side of things, you don't yeah. want to be... Apparently, you're not meant to be siding with a dictator, right? Which, mm -hmm. which is what Putin is. But, uh, but nobody seems to be really... And again, this goes back to a fair and free press. Is like, why aren't people calling out the hypocrisy on these things? Mm -hmm. Well, it would be hard for the people in the mainstream media to call out the hypocrisy because they were the ones who was who well, were doing it, right? Yeah, it'd be <laughs> fair. I don't think we're going to see Brian Stelter get on air and uh, tell everyone that he was wrong about something. I just, I, I don't think that that's going to happen. Uh, all right, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Patriot Mobile. Uh, let me ask you, what is better than 50% off of your first two months with Patriot Mobile? Uh, Let's try winning cell service for life. You can do that if you go to patriotmobile.com slash news. Enter to win. You can learn how you can get 50% off your first two months of service. You could win cellular service for life plus a free Patriot starter kit when you join Patriot Mobile, which is, by the way, America's only Christian conservative mobile phone company. They have nationwide coverage. They use the same towers that the other major carriers do, so you're getting the same service. They also have a bunch of different plans to fit any budget. They also have multiple multi-lane discounts. Uh, by the way, veterans, first responders, you are going to save even more. Patriot Mobile is the only cell phone company that shares your values, believes in the Constitution, is not going to take a portion of your hard-earned money.
money that you pay with your bill every month and send it to left-leaning causes. You got to join. Go to patriotmobile.com slash news. It is patriotmobile.com slash news. Enter to win at patriotmobile.com slash news. All right. The reported number of children hospitalized with COVID-19 in California apparently, I know you guys are going to be shocked to hear this, was grossly inflated. This is according to uh, a new, two new studies. Hospital Pediatrics was one of them, uh, a journal of medicine for pediatric care. Um, I, you're, I mean, you're not talking like small inflation numbers. You're talking at least 40, at least 40 percent. They also uh, likely say that uh, the findings are going to be the same across the United States, that the, uh, the, the children who were hospitalized way less than you would expect, which is kind of like for any of us who were paying attention. Um, Matt, I know I saw you on social media. You were right in with all of this. For any of us who were paying attention, we're like, uh, yeah, no duh which I changed that, by the way. I was not going <laughs> to say duh, and I changed it, so you're welcome, edit. Um, re- the viewers really should appreciate how much we've cleaned this show it's, up. It's true. Or, I, or maybe many, they don't appreciate it. I don't know. how much Let I've been know. reprimanded, Matt. It's <laughs> insane. Right on. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, they, so they said that um, the taken together, these studies underscore the importance of clearly distinguishing between children hospitalized with SARS-CoV-2 found on universal testing versus those hospitalized for COVID-19 disease, uh, the reported hospitalization rates greatly overestimate the true burden of COVID-19 disease in children. And there is no reason to think these findings would be exclusive to California. This sort of retrospective chart review will likely reveal the same findings across the country. And that even is like, even the numbers that they did report were so low. Even that was, uh, was grossly inflated. I'm shocked. I, for one, am shocked. I cannot believe we, that they would have ever inflated any of these numbers. We've had a lot of told you so moments uh, in the last couple of weeks. You know, I mean, we told you. It's, it, it, what, is it difficult sometimes? Because sometimes I'm like. Well, it really pisses me off because you have people who, you got the people on social media who come at you, right? Mm-hmm. And they, where do you get these numbers? Where do you get these? I mean, it's, it's you can find it. Yeah. You do your research. Yeah. We don't know. You know, the initial test, COVID test, their little rating thing was all the, set all the way up to 35 in yes. its sensitivities. And so it was giving 97% false positives. Right. Uh, it, that kind of stuff's not reported, right? This is the kind of thing that they're not talking about. We'll talk about it because we're calling it out. Mm-hmm. And you don't know what to trust anymore. You, you don't know what numbers. I, you know, people are like, well, COVID's a real thing. It killed grandma. And I, look, I get that. It's a real thing. But we don't know what to believe about it because everybody's lying about the numbers and the stats. Yeah, I feel like a good uh, a good place to be is whatever Dr. Fauci says first. Probably don't believe. Don't that. believe right. that he's changing his mind by tomorrow. Yeah, what, whatever yeah. he says, I'm going to do the opposite. I think. Matt. And you know the thing that's really that really got to me. You say on social media, which is <clears throat> which is so difficult to take, is when you're trying to look at things. You're trying you're trying to take a step back and have a rational look at it and take in all the different mm-hmm. elements. You know, you look at all sides, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd like to say, but. If you quote something that is from a conservative website, oh, it's a conservative website. Right. And I'm like, does that <laughs> invalidate it? Does right. that mean it's not real? Like, yeah. would you please look at the statistics? Yeah. Right. And then we can go from there. I mean, I remember that one of the first things, I don't know if you remember this, it's like man falls off ladder. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Man yes, falls off ladder, yes. to, like, he's, he's dies of Died COVID. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, Hang on a minute, like perhaps we should take a step back on it. Call me crazy, yeah. but you know, maybe we should take a step back and, and think that they might be doing something. And, and again, th- th- there's, this, there's this strange approach to doctors. Mm-hmm. They're infallible. Like right. you, you can't say a, a word against them because they've never made a mistake, never, right? Ever. Never, oh, ever never. made a mistake. But only government doctors. That's what gets me because if I say something that a doctor on the ground who's actually seeing the patient says, if they have not been state sponsored, everyone's like, he doesn't count. Or they're like, they're, they're, not a, they're not an epidemiologist. Yeah. Yeah. What do they know? Right. Like, well, hang on a minute. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I said I uh, repeated something that one of my son's doctors who has been in practice for, I mean, they decades. It's this, a family of doctors. Uh, and she was telling me about some of the things that she had seen adverse effects from the COVID vaccine. And I shared it. And I can't tell you how many people were like, you're making that up. That's BS. That's not true. That didn't happen. And I'm like... 
Yes, it did, number one, but number two, why is it so hard to believe that there would be a doctor who would say that there are adverse events that happen from a vaccine? Like, this is common knowledge if you look anywhere. Like, t yeah. take two seconds to I look this up. Yes, I posted yesterday, I said, you've had over 4,300 deaths, right? You've had 194,000 adverse reactions. You've had 17,000 serious injuries. And people are like, no, those numbers are not. <laughs> And they want to come back and say, well, there's not been that many uh, deaths. And it's like, it, there has been. And here's the problem. Just like a uh, guy falls off ladder, what they're doing is if they give you a shot and you drop dead, oh, well, the vaccine killed him. But if you die three days later, oh, right. what, I wonder what happened. Yeah. I wonder what happened. It wasn't a vaccine. He got that three days ago. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they don't count that. There's, there's probably more like twice that number. That, that truly exist that have had not only an adverse reaction, but a critical reaction mm -hmm. uh, or, or a death reaction yeah. from this thing. And nobody, nobody wants to talk about that. Not to mention, I don't know uh, how much you guys know about the vaccine adverse event reporting system, VAERS, that they're using to find all of these adverse events, but a lot of people will say, well, anyone can go in there and log an adverse event. It's, it's not like, it, it's not just doctors. Anyone can do it. And it's still, there have been studies that have come out and shown that still only about 1% they estimate of people who have adverse event events actually go in and document it. So still we are to believe those numbers that you just said, according to the studies that they've done on this database, those are actually underreported. Yeah underreported numbers because not everyone is going to know that it exists not every doctor is going to go in and log all of these adverse events that they're seeing and that that's just what that they say from the studies okay because what i like to do is follow the science matt yeah well this is one of the problems i think that we have is where we have one set of rules for one thing that conf is confirmation bias, right? It's like, oh, look, we, we have to look at this because my experience is I know someone or someone, someone who died of COVID. And yet when, you, when one of us might turn around and say, well, hang on a second. And by the way, this is just to be mindful so that we are, we are fully informed mm -hmm. before making a choice, yes. Yes. right? A choice, yes. which, which we keep advocating for, yes. give us the choice. It's not right. saying, you know, we're saying no, no one should take it or mm -hmm. right. yes, everyone should take it. You should have a choice. Yeah. But there's, there's clearly a difference between um, when you say that someone killed granny, or you want to kill granny because of this, but when you, when you turn around and you say, well, hang on a second, I want to make sure granny's leg doesn't fall <laughs> off, right? Because, <laughs> you know, when she's having the vaccine, but, and you're completely dismissed. Yeah. They're not applying these things yeah. equally yeah. to both things, which again, it goes back to hypocrisy. And it seems to be that that's okay, mm -hmm. right? That's okay. And yet, the, like I said, the, the adverse effects of both things should be taken into consideration, right? I mean, we don't dismiss it. And one of the things that drives me insane about this is these COVID deniers. What, what does that even mean? I, I don't understand. It's like climate denial. What does that even mean, right. Mm -hmm. right? We're not denying that there's COVID. We're not denying that there's a climate. We all know there's right. a climate. There's a climate. Right, right. There's a climate. Walk outside. What, do, what yeah. does that even mean, yeah. right? So can, can we just start calling things what they are and, right. and be accurate with them, right? Yeah. And, and also, if you're gonna use this method to, uh, to analyze one thing, let's just use, use it to same. analyze the yeah. other thing, exactly. right? Then you get uniformity and then we can make a decision, mm -hmm. right? Which really honestly is a really good point uh, to bring up at this particular stage in the game when they're, I mean, they're giving this vaccine to kids to the kids who, by the way, hello, they just said, according to these studies, I'm following the science here, that all of the COVID-19 hospitalization numbers for children were grossly inflated. So maybe we could step back and say, hey, why are we just like, just jamming these injections down our kids' uh, arms when they probably are not at risk? By the way, I know, you know, the vice president and the president would have you feel like, you don't have a choice, Matt, as you said, there needs to be a choice, but they're very, very much pushing, pressuring everyone to get this. Um, it, it's not been FDA approved. Not to say that I trust the FDA personally, but for all of you out there, surely the, the left does. It's not even been FDA approved. So we're supposed to inject our children with something that has not even been FDA approved. It is only authorized for emergency use. You're supposed to just not even think about it. You're just supposed to do it because it's so dangerous. Um, and here we are, we're working with false numbers. So yeah. just thought I would bring that up. Yeah.
And they're busing people in to get the vaccine. They're busing children in at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a, an event And 12 in to 15 for now. Just yeah. wait. It'll get lower. Yeah, of course it will. Yeah, they'll, they'll be giving and kids. Kids don't get it. No, no. They don't get it. I mean, an infinitesimally small number. Right, yeah. But you know, the other thing is, is an approach to parenting. And I mentioned it before, his approach to parenting is, you know, you gotta let your kids be kids. And, mm. and I know this, trust me, because I've got a ton of kids, right? So <laughs> my, my kids will like walk into stuff and they'll, they'll eat mud and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's part and parcel of being kids. And I think that, that what so many people are doing is they're trying to protect, put their kids in this, this kind of bubble, mm -hmm. right? Where nothing will ever happen to them. That is not life, That's right? right? And, and mm -hmm. they you, you, you're denying children their childhood, right? By not letting them go out. And this is one of the things I love about America, right? I always say this to my friends back home is that you can still be eaten by a bear in America, <laughs> right? You can, you yeah. know, you can still walk out. I mean, even in California, yeah. you know, there, there are bobcats and all that. That, that. that is pretty much gone now in Europe. So there's more of a sanitized kind of approach to parenting. You know, like mm -hmm. driving to play dates and all that. And that's one of the reasons why I came here. I don't want that. I want my kids to, you know, go off on their bikes and yeah. scrape and, and, yeah. and, scrape and yeah. come back and, yeah. and all that. And it, 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 build, it does build character. It also doesn't build fragile individuals, right? right? And, we, and we need that. And that's one of the things that I love. And this, this is why I think one of the reasons why America is so great is because it still has cowboys. It still has guys that go out and hunt you know, w w the people that live off the land, you yeah. know, that, that is pretty much gone. And I, I think that, you know, I think it was Oscar Wilde that says we're, a, we're, you know, two nations separated by a common language. Mm -hmm. America is very different, right? It is very different, even though the language is the same, we're very different as people. And, and I, I do see this kind of moving, especially in the, on, the, on the seaboard, right, is moving towards a European, like mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And for me, I didn't come here for a European mindset. I came right. here because I wanted to be an American and yeah. an American mindset, right? So that there is this sanitizing of children. I mean, we have to protect them in some ways, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, which is kind of odd when you're willing to inject your kids with an experimental. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. like the, the, there's all this hypocrisy going on that I just don't. It, it's not logical to me. And this is a voice of authority because this dude saved Rambo in yeah. the movie. <laughs> oh he yeah, he took out the dude that was about to kill Rambo. <laughs> So not to brag or anything. He knows. He knows. He knows. Okay. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know because I played a hero once yeah, on TV. <laughs> All right, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Omaha Steaks. Uh, summer is right around the corner, and for those of you who you live in a place where your governor is letting you have a backyard grill out. You got to be prepared, all right? It's not complete without Omaha Steaks. You got to go to omahasteaks.com. Enter keyword Y, that is W-H-Y, in the search bar. You can order the Let's Go Grill package today. It is huge. It's got so much stuff. We're going to load you up. Uh, also, you're going to get a bonus of 12 Omaha Steaks burgers for free. That's almost four pounds of free burgers. You're also going to get $20 off of your first order. Um, I mean, when I say you're loaded up, you're loaded up. They've got four butcher cut filet mignons, four boneless pork chops, a pound of chicken breast, kielbasa sausages, so much more. You got to go there to find all of them. Uh, you got to be prepared for your grill out. So maybe you're the one who does the cooking. They make it very, very easy for you. Maybe you're the one that does the eating, like me. Trust me when I say you're going to enjoy it. You got to go to omahasteaks.com, use the code Y in the search bar, and get those 12 free burgers and $20 off at checkout. It is omahasteaks.com, promo code Y. Governor Greg Abbott uh, here in Texas issued an executive order yesterday, Tuesday, I got my day right that time, that will ban local governments and schools from requiring face masks. Here is his tweet. He said, Texas is prohibiting mask mandates by government entities. Starting May 21st, local governments attempting to impose mask mandates can be fined up to $1,000. We're also prohibiting public schools from mandating masks after June 4th. Texans, not government, should decide their best health practices. Um, it, it's just interesting, Chad, uh, I will defer to uh, the future governor of Texas here. It's just interesting because he says Texans, not government, should decide their best health practices. And I feel like that's what you were saying the year that he shut us down and made us cover our faces. So what I'm doing is in direct response to what he did. Yeah. And a lot of people say, well, it's easy to look back hindsight's 2020 and play armchair quarterback. Uh, 
but I were saying these things 14 yes, months ago. Yes. Uh, he was doing that. Right. The exact thing he's trying to undo now, he created. So you can't, you can't come in there and say, and pat yourself on the back and say, I'm fixing this problem. You created the problem. That's what I said originally. We should be treated like adults to take responsibility mm -hmm. and lead the nation by showing, because I wouldn't have had a problem. I wouldn't have had a problem that said, hey, y'all look after each other, okay? Y'all yeah. do the right thing. The right thing may be different for Matt than it is for me. I, I, I don't know what your situation is. You do the right thing. But instead, he unilaterally and dictatorially just wiped out our freedoms. Businesses were destroyed. Lives were lost. Suicide was escalated. Uh, you know, everything that was going on. Um, families were broken because of a government intervention. And somebody said, well, how would you, why, why do you think you would have done it differently? Because it was unconstitutional. It was unconstitutional. And, and you say, well, I just, I, we had to have those mandates. Uh, that's a slippery slope. It is because, and I feel like Matt, maybe we're preaching to the choir here um, because, you know, you, you're here in America for a reason, but freedom is messy sometimes, but you still have to err on the side of freedom. You do, and I think it's, uh, it's those founding principles Right, mm -hmm. and people tend to poo-hoo them a lot, you know, yeah. I mean, especially obviously with the big ones, the First and Second Amendment, you know, but they're, they're really crucial. I mean, you know, contrary to what people believe, England does not have a First Amendment, for example. Mm, right. So we learned so, that with Prince Harry recently. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's like, and, and this is an interesting thing that we spoke about before. But yeah. they do not teach about 1776 in British schools. So right. I mean, even yeah. in Eton or wherever you went, which is, which is kind of ironic. But uh, I mean, look, I came from the communist state of California, so I'm here, and I'm like, hey, listen, I was always looking at Texas because I knew, that, look. America is an idea, right? It's this sure. amazing idea, and it's built on the backs of people like Texans. Mm -hmm. I always look at like Texas, like the, the you know the great states that sent people off to war that that were willing to fight for freedom, and and to poo-hoo that on any level is uh, is is a folly, really, mm -hmm. because you know you do start going going down a slippery slope. If you give an inch, we've seen it. We've we, if you give an inch they'll take more and take more and take yep. more and take more. So it's not a principle that people should just dismiss to say, listen, this is a constitutional thing. Sometimes it's messy. Sometimes things happen, right? That you, you know, you, you, you can't protect everyone all the time, mm -hmm. yeah. right? That things are going to happen, but those principles of freedom are, are, are why I'm here, right. yeah. you know, and, and they shouldn't be taken uh, lightly. And of all the places in America, this is the place that should be leading 100%. that charge. Right. Well, that's why we're like we're embarrassed of being behind Florida right now. That's embarrassing. We're like, who, who and, is and by the way, not supposed and, to be the and, beacon of liberty and freedom? And, and that statement for unmandating doesn't go far enough. Yeah. Because some of that needs there, there needs to be some application for private businesses as well. Uh, no, you, you can't be fined for, for violating masks, uh, you know, a mask wearing mandate. You, you, you know, DeSantis did that in Florida. Yeah. He said, we're not going to let people get fined. Uh, we're not going to, uh, he basically said, I'm going to pardon. If you get in trouble for not wearing a mask, I'm going to pardon you. That simple. Mm -hmm. That's, that's freedom right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could go into campaign mode. I don't want to do that on this show. But, I mean, I kind of wanted you to. I know but. you do, but you know how fired up <laughs> I get about this thing. I don't like being told what to do, and I don't like being told I can't do something. That's just, that is the independent nature of my spirit. And I just, you know, you either get freedom or you don't. Mm -hmm. It's caught. It's not taught. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you either, see, you either see the pirate ship in that jumbled up picture or you don't, right? Yeah. But once you see it, you see it forever. Yeah. And, and once you've been infected with that, there is no inoculation. Well, it's just frustrating, too, for someone like me who, you know, I'm a mom of, uh, I mean, I have two children, but one who's in school, and I pulled him be over this stupid mask mandate BS, uh, among a few other things, but it's like, uh, bro, I just spent an entire school year homeschooling my child, not doing remote, homeschooling my child by myself because you thought that it would be a good idea to allow school districts to mask our children, even though all of these studies and data that we have shows that it is not good for them. And now all of a sudden, what, a week before school's out, he's gonna come out and be like, oh yeah, Texans should definitely decide that. It's like, uh, 
We could have used that at the beginning of the school year. I'm sure it's really easy at the end of the school year when it's not going to be as, you know, controversial for you to come out and say that, but could have used your help then. Yeah. I mean, it's it's incredible to me. And then of course he gets credit because all these people go, "Oh, thank you, sir, for the freedom That's that, what I'm saying. that you, you took away." You can't pat yourself on the back for a crisis you created. Yeah. So yeah. Ugh, all right, uh, we've got more to come. Well, oh, okay, so after the break, let's talk about uh, all the UFO stuff. Yeah. We, we got to get into that. We'll be yeah, back. Yeah, I'm waiting to get picked up. <laughs> All right, just to wrap up this uh, conversation, we were kind of talking about this off air. And Matt, you pointed out, can you, can you, yeah. could you repeat yourself for I, the class? I, I, I will repeat myself <laughs> for the class. Yeah, so I, obviously, you know, coming from England, I pay attention to what's going on over there. And if you want to see, like, what a complete mess it is, and if you really want to start analyzing the way that governments are handling this, look at the way the Brits have done it, which has been a complete disaster, mm -hmm. right? So, so they turned around and said, we will shut down in 20 days or however many days it is, right? Mm -hmm. So how dangerous is it yeah. if you're gonna wait 20 days to shut down, right? right? I was saying like, you know, if the Nazis are coming over and they're bombing and you know, oh, well, they can see the lights of the houses, but don't turn them off until next Thursday, right? right? Because everyone needs to get the message. Right. Right. You gotta just turn everything off now. Yeah. If it's that bad, you have to stop immediately, right? Mm -hmm. right? So, and then it's the same thing. Well, we're gonna open up at right. this day. Well, well, if it's okay, and you have the numbers saying that it's okay. Open up right now. Yeah. Right. Like right now, there's no reason to yeah. prolong this at all. Yeah. yeah, when you say no masks for children going to school uh, June 4th, well, school's out. Right, right. Yeah, it's like, I mean, summer school, I guess. So uh, the kids who have to take remedial classes yeah. uh, are happy. They get to breathe. <laughs> yeah, they're happy. That's probably why they fail the classes anyway. Yeah, <laughs> they well. They couldn't breathe. And by the way, I would just like to say, as someone who just went through this also, um, those of the people who that was going to matter to them probably already made a decision about next year. They've yeah. already gone through the research. They've already made the decision about next year based on the mask mandates. And now all of a sudden that was all for no reason. So once again, thank you, Governor Abbott. That's that's yeah. great, wonderful. Uh, all right, so let's go to, there's so much UFO talk and I think everyone's missing it because the world is insane and crazy. And they're like, uh, the Pentagon's like, oh, by the way, yeah, no, there are definitely UFOs and we don't know what they are. I Barack could have Obama told them that like, 100 years ago. Yeah, Barack Obama's like, yeah, there have definitely been some unexplained uh, flying objects. We don't know what they are. And everyone is just not even paying attention. Uh, so here is some leaked footage from the U.S. Navy. It shows uh, this an ident unidentified flying object in California. And so you guys can see it, obviously, if you're watching on podcasts. And it just starts pitching suddenly downwards. Uh, beneath the surface of the ocean. So, um, it's, by the way, no wings, no propulsion, just very, very odd, very odd. And I do feel like if there is life out there, number one, they're like, screw you guys, we're going home. We don't want any part of this. But number two, this would probably be the time to admit it because everything's insane and they're like uh yeah by the way um there are aliens among us I'm and, then, you, and then nobody listens could have told you y'all <laughs> i'm telling you i was laying there in my trailer and i started floating and i went up and i met <laughs> cecil space jesus <laughs> and we there was no butt diddling i tell you that oh, right God. there was none of that butt diddling <laughs> stuff so don't even accuse me of that <laughs> that's it yeah. that's all i'm gonna get from chad everybody in the trailer chad. park knows there's aliens Everybody, they know there's two things. Alien, there's two things everybody that lives in the trailer park knows. There's aliens and there's tornadoes. But the great thing about living in a trailer park is you don't have to worry about ghosts. Because if you <laughs> die in a mobile home, you're not coming back. <laughs> you don't want to come back to that. That's why they're always in the big mansions. Uh, yeah. you but here's me. the thing: what kind of if <laughs> if there are if there are aliens, right? Which I don't, you know, I, I have yeah, my own thoughts on this. Well, I think that there's been some, if you look back at like the SR-71 Blackbird and you see what that was like and that was born out of the 50s, which is kind of remarkable. You know, I always say, look at that, by the way, and how far have we come that we can build the Hoover Dam so quickly back then and then the right. SR-71 and, and we can't get anything done today. It's kind of like we, we've almost gone backwards. But to me, I think that there's pro it's probably an American um, 
secret projects because they're so far ahead of, of yeah. where we are. But, but here's my question. But if they were aliens, would they be like the E.T. kind? No. Like, would they be the E.T. kind? Or no. would they be like, like the thing? Yeah. Hmm. Or would they be like those gray ones from Close Encounters? I just you know, don't want them be? to look scary. I want them to be I like want... Stepford Wives. <laughs> just, just, a, just a whole race of Amazon women, big, tall, pretty girls. You know, it, what's, it's funny. I, when I was, I was uh, going through what we were going to talk about on the show today, and I had, you know, uh, some website up, and on the corner was an ad for some something having to do with aliens, and it was it showed this blow up inflatable alien, the typical with like the weird eyes, you know. Yeah. And um, my son was behind me, and he was like oh my gosh, is that a real alien? And I was like, no, it's like a blow up thing that it's an inflatable that they just put in the picture. And he did not believe me. He thought he was like, no, it's not. And I was like, Sawyer, it's not real. It's fake. It's That's not an alien. That's what homeschooling gets you, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. We haven't covered the unidentified <laughs> flying objects and do <laughs> aliens exist <laughs> unit. Sarah's the teacher. Okay. <laughs> but that is a good point because I really do want them to look like E.T. Oh. Yeah, that'd be kind of cute, right? It would right? be very cute. Yeah, like you don't want to talk mushroom. like the others, like Alien. Yeah. Like, that'd be a nightmare. Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah, no. But they are off the coast of California, so maybe that's all right. Yeah, who knows? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, my God. Well, that would be nothing compared to what's going on in California. Yeah, exactly. They'd be like, well, you guys are too crazy for me. I'm not going there. I know. I mean, all these, Elon Musk is an alien, you know? He is pretty weird. Donald I Trump's an that. alien. You think? That's why he wears the orange paint. He's got to cover up the scales in the green. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Okay, we've got like 45 seconds left before we have to go to break. And I want to ask you, Matt, before we go, um, what do you think of the Recall Newsom uh, drive that they have going on? I have no right idea now? why it took so long. I yeah, mean, yeah. the guy is the most incompetent person mm -hmm. and so tone deaf. And uh, I mean, he's it is just a complete joke. Yeah, there. it really is. I mean, it's a, it's a mess. Yeah. So you think I'm, he's going to he's going to get ousted? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this is the problem. You yeah. know, it's kind of it, I guess the, the people that would want to oust him for the most part. I mean, actually, there's there's a lot of bipartisan support for it because people see that he's mm -hmm. such a nightmare. Yep. But yep. the majority of the people that would be doing that are too busy working and making a living right. to to get concerned about that. And I think that that is a genuine issue yeah. in those in those mm. political things. They, they they really should be looking after the the local politics first, yeah. and then and then building from there. That's agree. Amen. Yep. Amen. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be back. Uh, those of you watching this show while it's airing will probably have already heard this, but uh, as of the time of this taping, it is now breaking news. We just saw that uh, Israel and Hamas will apparently, uh, they've agreed to a ceasefire. Uh, it was reportedly reached between the two parties. This is, of course, still developing and ongoing. But uh, that's, you know what? That's that's the nature of the news. You film something and you're like, nailed it. And then and then change happens. So we'll see. You we'll see how that checks about. out. What? First the school thing. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> this guy. This is the last time I have you on my show. Oh, no, it's I'm not. I'm quitting your campaign. <laughs> no, they, they were watching the show, and they were like, those guys, we better come together. That's a together. great point. Yeah. That's a great point. He they, went out live, they changed. I'm just saying. I'm just right. pointing it out That there. is a great point. Well, because they, like, so they <laughs> hacked into our systems and saw that we were saying this before mm -hmm. all of you lovely people were watching it. So you're welcome, everyone. Uh, also, don't forget to join Blaze TV. Uh, you can go to blazetv.com slash news. If the, those of you who are watching on YouTube, Facebook, whatever the case may be, we don't know when our time is up on big tech. So make sure you do that. Also, make sure that you are following Matt Marsden, uh, actor, producer. You've seen him in so many different things. He's a great follow on Twitter. I'm just, I just got to well, say. thank you. Absolutely. I just got to say. And don't forget also to subscribe to the Chad Prather Show.